resonance is the natural frequency at which objects oscillate. Many of you are familiar with a version of resonance, having seen an old movie gag. It's the gag where an opera singer sings a high note and smashes a wine glass. We're going to do that today. But there are a couple of changes. First, uh, on the singing side, I considered asking Coach K to come and see if he would be willing to sing for us, but I heard he went away this weekend. <laughs> so I brought some equipment in to simulate that, that note. The second change, we're going to smash a beaker instead of a wine glass. And the reason for this is quite simply, it's just cost. <laughs> Beakers are much cheaper than wine glasses, as you can imagine, and part of our mission statement says we must keep Duke tuition low. <laughs> so before we get started on the demo, I'd like to talk a, about a few of the fundamentals behind resonance, uh, namely waves and a couple of elements of waves. So there are lots of kinds of waves. We're going to be using a sound wave here. Um, and the, the two elements that I want to discuss briefly are frequency and amplitude. So when I hear the word waves, even though I'm a nerd and proud of it, I think of the beach. And the waves at the beach, while they are not an ideal representation of other waves, they'll do a, a decent job. You know, they look like this. They have a height. And the, height, the higher the wave, the, the more powerful the wave. The height is known scientifically as the amplitude. And so other waves, the higher their amplitude, the more energy they have, just like the ocean wave is more powerful the higher it is. So what we want to do is encourage large amplitude here in this demonstration. It'll help us smash the beaker. But amplitude alone is not going to take care of this conundrum. We need to also address frequency. Now, frequency is the wave rate. So we're going to have a wave form, a series of waves. And what, wave, what frequency means, or wave rate, is the number of waves that pass a certain point in one, one second. Now, one second is the standard amount of time that we measure frequency. So, for example, if there's a wave coming in front of me, and I count three of them in one second, the frequency is three. And the unit we use is hertz, so it's three hertz. If there were seven waves coming in front of me in one second, it would be seven hertz. Other types of waves, we've got waves flying all around this room right now. There are radio waves, broadcast radio waves. So, for example, FM radio, your favorite station, you have the frequency band that you tune into, let's say 104.0. That means 104.0 megahertz is the carrier wave for the information they put out. So there are 104 million waves or cycles per second going in front of me, going in front of any point. Other waves that you probably are at least indirectly interested in here are ones to do with cell phones. Your cell phone carriers use bands anywhere from 700 megahertz to 2.7 gigahertz. So that's 700 million cycles per second up to 2.7 billion. But we're not going to smash this beaker with those high frequency waves. We're, we're talking about sound waves here and they are very, very low frequency. They run from about the audible range. Now the audible range is what we hear when we're, we're uh, little. As we get older, our hearing deteriorates for a variety of reasons, environmental, noise at work, health issues, also self-inflicted. You know, the earbuds with loud music is not a good thing for hearing. In my case, since earbuds weren't invented yet, we just turned our speakers up real loud. But before all that in life, say, when we're toddlers, we can hear from about 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So 20 hertz is very low. This beaker has a resonant frequency of a little over 900 hertz. 
I know that because I cheated and figured it out ahead of time. So what we, and, and that's going to be very audible when we actually turn the, the tone on to break it. So before we get to the demo, I want to just show you a little bit about some waves. I've got a mechanical wave over here and show you a couple of items about a wave and also set up resonance on this spring. So first of all, I'm going to send one wave or one pulse down this spring. And I want you to pay attention to the amplitude and also what happens to the wave when it gets to the other end. Okay, so the amplitude was about that. When it got to the other end, it turned and came back, but it also inverted. Now, if this were a sound wave, it would be something like, huh, and that's not going to break our beaker. We need a series of waves at the same frequency over a long period of time. We need something more like, huh, over a very long period of time. So let me create a wave here of some frequency, a series of waves, a waveform, if you will, and see what we get. OK, that, so that, that's not very good. That was just some random frequency. The first wave went down, came back, and interacted with the second wave, and sort of changed its shape, and they changed each other's shape, and the third one got involved. And so I don't know what that would sound like. I want a nice waveform at a, at a known frequency. You know, if, if that had been a sound wave, it, it could have been heavy metal. I don't know. <laughs> so what I need to do is be very careful with the frequency I generate so that the first wave goes down, turns around and comes back, and matches up exactly with the next wave. This is what's called in phase. So let's see if I can get that going. OK, notice the amplitude is, is huge. It also looks like it's standing still. This is called a standing wave. But it's not standing still. Waves are going down and back constantly. Also notice my hand. Very little energy going into this to maintain it. So as, as I said, resonance is the natural frequency at which an object oscillates. In the case, the beaker is an object. So if we get the right frequency coming out of that speaker, that object, the beaker, is going to start oscillating like this. Very small oscillations, but nevertheless, it will oscillate. And if we crank up the amplitude, it will oscillate more until it oscillates too far and it breaks itself apart. Another couple of examples of resonance out there in the world, there are just, they're all over the place. But a very common one is in many people's backyard, or at least at the playground, the swing set. It's a, the swing is a pendulum. And if you recall swinging or pushing somebody, and you get that natural frequency. It's a, at a very high amplitude, the swing pretty much keeps going itself. You just need a tiny little bit of the energy to keep it going. Same as with the resonance here with the spring. Another example fascinating example of resonance in the world, and I won't get into details, I just want to mention it, is tidal resonance. And these are extreme tides in a few places around the world, the most famous of which is just up the East Coast in Canada, the Bay of Fundy between Nova Scotia and New Brunswick. And the tides, because the continental shelf has to be approximately 300 kilometers wide for this to happen, and it is that way in the Bay of Fundy, the, the depth of the Bay of Fundy. The difference between low tide, say here on the stage deck, and high tide, the most extreme in the Bay of Fundy is 50 feet. And this is, takes six hours. Go from here to 50 feet up there is the surface of the water. Six hours later, it's back here again, every day. OK, so now let's get to the, the uh, experiment. As I said, I brought in equipment to simulate the uh, high note. I've got a, a function generator here, and this just generates a waveform, a signal. And in this case, it's a sinusoid. So a nice waveform, just like I created with the uh, spring. Then it goes through 
an amplifier, and it's still an electrical signal. So the amplifier just increases the amplitude. We amplify the amplitude. And then finally, it comes out of this device, which is a takes the electrical signal and converts it to a sound wave. So it, you could call it a, an electrical wave to sound wave converter, or I prefer to call it a speaker. <laughs> so if we have the, the right frequency, I'll turn the amplitude up and it'll smash. But I don't know that we do exactly. So to pinpoint the frequency, I need a feedback loop. So I convert the signal back from sound wave to electrical wave through the microphone into this device, which is an oscilloscope. An oscilloscope is just a lab tool we use to look at electrical signals. And that's what we have up here. So you notice if I get close to this microphone, you'll see my voice on the oscilloscope. Hello. We'll have a nice wave up there in just a second. So what I'm going to do is turn the tone on at a very low level, and I'm going to adjust the frequency a little bit until we get to resonance. And when we get to resonance, there will be a noticeable increase in amplitude, just like the spring. OK, that's resonance. Everybody see that? So we're going to save that. That's 910.3 hertz. That's the resonant frequency of this beaker. So now we want to break the beaker. But I have mentioned that the beaker oscillates before it breaks. And while you should take me at my word, in fact, you should take me at my word for everything I say ever, <laughs> I would like to sh show you that it is indeed oscillating. So we're going to try this. We have a little bit of trouble with this dome and this wonderful facility letting in all the light, but what's going to happen is we'll, we'll turn the lights off shortly, and I've got a strobe light. And so the strobe flashes on at a certain frequency. And imagine, so you only see the beaker when the strobe is on. So imagine the beaker is oscillating like this, and it strobes at the same frequency as the beaker, or a multiple of it, so it would get strobe, flash, 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 and you wouldn't notice any change in the beaker. It would be back at its original position. So we have to offset the frequency of the strobe, in other words, make it asynchronous. So we have this phenomenon, strobe, 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 strobe. So you'll see it at these different points. What I'm not sure about is if it's going to be dark enough for us to see that. In that case, you will have to take me at my word. Now. A word of caution, this is going to be really loud, and this is serious. It's going to be uncomfortably loud, very extremely uncomfortably loud. And so when we turn the lights down, you know, I want everybody to plug, I want you all to plug your ears. I'm going to put a big thing on my, my ears to protect mine, and just watch the screen. We'll watch the beaker. So can we get the, the beaker up on the screen, please? And so I, I'm going to turn the strobe on now. OK, the lights, this is as dark as it's going to get. And now they're going to turn my microphone off because we don't need to add to the noise. Thank you, physics.